It's so good to be with you all at this year's Netroots Nation. I want to start by saying thank you to the staff and volunteers who made this event possible. And by thanking all of you for your commitment to moving our country forward. My friends, you all are more powerful than you even know. You proved it this past year. Millions of Americans, led by young people and progressives, took to the streets in protest. You all demanded that this country live up to its original promise that all of us are created equal. You made justice and equity a priority. You demanded climate action. You insisted on leadership that delivers. Why? Because you all had hope for a better future. Hope for leadership that would fight to address the everyday needs of you, your loved ones, and people all across the country. Some folks doubted you. They said no change would come, that you wouldn't follow through, but you all acted on your hope. You took the power you built in the streets and you brought it to the ballot box. You worked hard to elect President Biden, Vice President Harris, and Democrats up and down the ballot. And most importantly, folks, you made history. Already, your hard work has paid off. We expanded the child tax credit to give working families a monthly tax cut. My friends, we already have lifted 3 million kids out of poverty, and we're projected to cut the child poverty rate in half. The bipartisan infrastructure deal is poised to make the biggest investment in clean energy transmission and electric vehicle infrastructure in the nation's history. The rest of the president's Build Back Better agenda is going to help us lower the cost of child care and make meaningful investments in our care economy. Believe me, we're going to pass the president's Build Back Better agenda, and we're going to pay for it by asking the super wealthy and corporations to pay their fair share in taxes. My friends, none of this would have been possible without each and every one of you knocking on doors, registering voters, serving your neighbors. These may seem like little things, but they all add up to victory. And in 2020, you did all of these things and more. You know, forget the doubters and the skeptics. Our monumental victory in 2020 was the result of years of work by folks like you. You all have been laying the groundwork since 2016. Many of you even longer than that. In places like Georgia and Arizona, Michigan and Wisconsin, you all made the difference. Because of your vision and planning and execution, we were able to send President Biden and Vice President Harris to the White House, win back the United States Senate, and keep our majority in the House of Representatives. And because we put Democrats in office, because we had real public servants leading the way, we've already made huge progress. So on behalf of the Democratic Party and the nation as a whole, thank you. You all were essential to everything that we've accomplished so far. And if we want to keep getting results, if we want to keep delivering bold transformational policy for the American people, you all, we all have to stay engaged. I know this work is hard. I know it is frustrating. Watching Republicans play political games with our health and safety, watching them turn their backs on our fundamental rights because it will score them a, a few more points from Tucker Carlson. Folks, it pisses me off. Seeing Mitch McConnell throw around empty platitudes about my friend Congressman John Lewis, when at the same time, he's dishonoring the man's legacy by blocking voting rights legislation. It makes my blood boil. I'm sure many of you feel the same way. Whether it's voting rights, climate change, reproductive freedom, or any number of issues, you're fed up with a disregard for others. With a GOP's failure to actually do anything of substance for you and your family and your communities. But here's the thing, folks. We can hit these clowns where it hurts. At the ballot box. If you've had your fill of Republican senators doing too much talking and not enough legislating, a whole bunch of them are vulnerable in 2022. We have the power to show them the door and give the president more votes to advance his bold agenda. If you're angry that Greg Abbott thinks he can get away with denying the constitutional rights of women, guess what? He's up for re-election. If you heard enough anti-science nonsense from Ron DeSantis, let's hold him accountable because he's up in 22. Because if we don't act, if we sit on the sidelines, if we say, woe is me, we'll end up with Speaker McCarthy and Leader McConnell. 
This country can't afford that, my friends. We've worked too hard and come too far to go backwards right now. When we work together, when the progressive movement engages with the Democratic Party, we accomplish big things. We saw it in Georgia. I'm not asking you to paper over your differences or squash debate. I'm asking all of us to unite around our shared values, our shared belief that elected officials are first and foremost public servants, that their chief concern should always be how they, they, how they can deliver for their communities. Because if we do that, we can send a powerful message all across the country in 2022. We can remind folks that public service, elected office, it's not about red states and blue states, red states or red counties or blue counties. It's about which leaders care about you and which leaders care about the photo op. It's about which leaders are showing up in your communities every day and which leaders only remember your blog come election day. You know, it's about which leaders are fighting to deliver for you and your loved ones and which leaders are only fighting to stay politically relevant. Democrats are working every day to be there for you. This D behind me doesn't only stand for Democrats, it stands for delivers. Folks, we are the brick wall between chaos and hope, and we cannot falter. So I want to thank you all again for having me today. One thing I love to leave folks with, our motto in South Carolina is, while I breathe, I hope, but our motto as a party, our motto as activists has to be, while I breathe, I vote, because my friends, that is how we bring hope to your community, to your neighborhood to your state, back to this great nation of ours. Again, it's an honor to be in this fight with each and every one of you. Thank you all so much for having me today.